have something I want you guys to do for me today and I want you to go and watch Sucker Punch if you haven't already watched it because that's what I'm going to be talked about now. I think you should watch it first because the chances are you're not really going to understand the film 100% because I know myself when I watched the film I really didn't quite understand it and then watched it the second time I was like okay and back then I didn't have someone to tell me about it so that's what I'm going to do today so if you haven't already watched the film go and watch it now and then come back and watch this Sucker Punch is at least a year and a half old now and it was incredibly successful when it came out because it is a wonderful film. The reason I love it so much is because I love metaphors. Like the other day when I was talking about colour, it applies so much in this film along with a number of things. And the reason I'm bringing this up today is because I've recently been looking at film language in my animation course and it's inspired me to do this. So first off, we're going to talk about the actual storyline. It starts off with this character known as Baby Doll throughout the film and her stepfather has basically killed everyone um, and of course she's been sent to this mental asylum and he manages to convince the control guard or one of the asylum elderlies or whatever you want to call him and um, he forges the signature of the psychiatric lady and basically makes her have an abotomy so that she can't tell everyone about what's happening and then what she does, baby doll, is go into this whole fantasy world to kind of block everything out so she is in denial of what's actually happening. She's trying to completely fantasize about something better than what it actually is and she ends up coming into a brothel instead of a mental asylum which still isn't amazing but it's probably a lot better than the mental asylum although we could, you know, we could weigh arguments on that, which is better, you know, have your pick. Also, the high roller is the man who's going to give her the lobotomy, and she has to convince him that she isn't worthy, like, she's not supposed to be having this lobotomy, and so in her fantasy, she's trying to get away from giving her virginity to him, which in real life is actually her giving away her innocence, which, you know, virginity, innocence thing. But when she does these dances for him, it's actually her trying to convince him at start. And at first he, you know, he's like, yep, you're insane, you're gonna have a lobotomy. But in this, he's like, yeah, I'm impressed with this young lady. <laughs> at the beginning of the film, you notice that she notices a number of things like um, the map, the lighter, the keys and so on, which she then has to get from these people and when she's dancing she's distracting them so she's acting on the whole crazy thing um, in real life so that she can help everyone escape. And Each one is a huge metaphor towards what it is that she has to do, each adventure that she goes on during these dances which is another fantasy is like making it better than what it really is. The main thing that I always notice about Baby Doll is her white hair. This signifies her innocence and the pigtails as well enhances that. White is a very pure colour that is supposedly worn by all virgins and she is a virgin and she is an innocent character, you know, she didn't really kill her sister but that's what they're trying to crazy her for. Crazy category her. Whatever, you know. The costumes are also quite a big thing. She's wearing a kind of sexified Japanese schoolgirl costume, which again is to signify her innocence, her youngness, everything about her is just enhanced on the whole innocence thing. And all the other characters, of course, are no longer innocent because, you know, they're all there for a reason because they actually did something, but not necessarily all of them are. And so, depending on the colours that they are, there are some that are with more kind of softer colours in their costumes, which you will notice. You know, they're the innocent characters and then there are the ones that have darker colours and more, you know, like darker hair. When the ones with darker hair, they've done something, but the ones with lighter hair, you know, they're innocent in what they've done. That They're innocent, they shouldn't be there. There are so many things I could say about this film and I don't want to go too much in topic, otherwise I will literally talk forever. And the editing process will be quite difficult, so I'm probably going to leave it there, but... 
there are so many things and I really hope you have seen the film and if you haven't I've just kind of spoiled it for you a little bit without being too precise if that helps but this is just a film that I've really enjoyed and I hope you watch it and I hope you all loved it as well as much as I did and being someone who loves metaphors I adore metaphors in every work that I do I just shower my work in metaphors because metaphors are a wonderful thing. But yes, do go watch Sucker Punch, tell me what you think about it, and discuss among yourselves, all in the comments, about it because there is so much you can say about this film. And are there any other films that you've found have just showered you with metaphors? Because I would love to see them. And if you can recommend me any other films that are very similar, you know, throw them in the comments and I'll watch them and I'll let you know what I think on Twitter. Um, a link for my Twitter is in my trousers along with my Facebook and Tumblr. Do go check them out, my Tumblr is awesome, just gonna say that, it's really pretty and filled with pretty things. I should probably mention, sad thing happened today, I came home and Churchill was dead. He was feeling very poorly the last few days. And Hitler was being such a babe to him. He was like just trying to cheer him up and trying to like push him towards where the food was because he went blind as well. It was the most adorable thing I'd ever seen. I was just sat there watching them yesterday, just like, you poor thing. But it was a genetic disorder that basically killed him. Oh well, it was flushed down the toilet. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye.